proven already to be one of the more top tier supports for that reason alone. And then this is a game, as you're suggesting, for oh, many yes. reasons, even to as more why this game is going to be great. Toronto, Tokyo. Certainly bringing a lot of value to the table here on this hero, but still got to execute. And mm -hmm. so far off the bat, it's a two for two bounty rune exchange. But I also want to talk about Beastmaster. I mean, again, pure yeah. going to be playing the Beastmaster this game. Uh, last pick. What, what do you think? Uh, I, I think it's pretty good for their draft. I think they already had a lot of team fights with like the Kunkka Water Park, and you have CK. I think trying to help and able your CK in this mid game is really important. So I think instead of like trying to go another core that like out carries Sven from the offlane. Just pick a hero that makes us then game harder. And I think Beast does exactly that. And then, of course, our mid matchup. It's the Earth Spirit, Kiyotaka, going up against Kunko. We've mentioned multiple times about the Kunko possibility. We're finally seeing he it here. He the tree. GPK just kill? placed a branch. Oh, I'm sorry, it might be a kill bottom. Oh, bottom lane, yeah. And Taurus is actually going to go down there. Nightfall getting credit for the kill. It's just chaos all over. Who would have thought? All right, so first blood for Ben Boom, that's great, but Kiyotaka just did a dirty play in mid. He kept spamming the Quelling Blade because he knew GPK is going to place a branch to eat it with his Tango, and <laughs> he just ate it straight out of his face. <laughs> well, there you go. Some mind games coming out right there. You see the top lane Treant, and the mind games running down save on that Dark Willow. But yeah, it's Eastern European Dota. We saw this especially in game one. I mean, not afraid to clash right off the bat. And well, so far, Bet Boom having that slight advantage as they get the first blood. And also about this top lane, Beast is pretty annoying for a tree. And like, unless Tree has a lane where he can kill, like just spamming axes and cutting down all these trees and then having the boar and the hawk is honestly very annoying. Like the level two, three timing here for Bet Boom is very strong. Yeah, and you see right there, both heroes even running into that Bramble Maze, trying to put pressure on Pure, but in the end, we'll be fine there as far as that top lane goes. Radiant Poison's coming out the bottom from attack. Shadow Demon. Gonna even start doing some pulling with it, but mid lane, ooh, Kyotaka getting low, but I know that these players, of course, they know their limits, so. Oh, yeah. Not gonna be a kill, but. They've played this matchup 8 billion times. As, uh, I see uh, GPK is getting a blood grenade on Kunkka. I don't know if he will stick to that. I do like seeing, you know, unconventional things coming out later. But uh, either way, I think I've seen this Kunkka and Earth Spirit matchup like quite a few times. And I think if Kiyotaka decides to go for a vessel, that can really destroy Kunkka in the mid game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Earth Spirit's certainly a fun hero to watch. It's been a fun hero throughout Dota history in the support role. It's been extra fun in this carry mid role that we've seen make many appearances already throughout this tournament. And, you know, you and I were, were commentating a game where we had an Earth Spirit that what, it was like 15-0 start, I want to oh, yeah. say. I mean, it was just bonkers. So, Kiyotaka uh, certainly has potential to, to start off strong, but a, a hero that, that feels like it fits his play style pretty well. Oh, absolutely. It's just like a flashy mid hero that can, like, scale a lot. I still think Earth Spirit is one of the best mids in Dota 2 right now, like, just as a hero. But, you know, you've got some, you got two of the best mid players just going at it. Continuing to do so as it's 18 to 3. Kunkka, 14 to 2 Earth Spirit. It's also a slight advantage for the Kunkka so far. And oh, maybe a kill potentially coming up. Both again manning up, knowing the limits though. And eventually we'll walk back from one another after trading a couple more blows right there. Bottom lane though. Uh, looked like a possible kill opportunity down here. Skywrath again in trouble. Nightfall with Riyadi Rift pulling. Three stacks of that poison. It's not going to be enough. So staying alive. Not quite look. enough, but it, it does show you, like, CK is a great pick here. He gets to sustain himself yeah. against the skeletons and, like, great things harass. Same with Sky, but he also threatens to kill. And that is what Sky pays him, also, all these PAs, Weavers, Chaos Knights. So just already showing why that pick was very good for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how about the all three carries, uh, cores even on this Radiant side and Bet Boom. They are top of the CS charts right now. All having a very good time. At least Wraith King kind of standing out as the one that's, you know, it's not going so well for him. Oh, mid lane. I think they got him. They do. They do. Okay. Good rotation coming out from the Skywrath. Ah, this just happens sometimes. You're so focused on your 1v1 mid, you just kind of lose track of the map and without anyone saying anything. Yeah, just nice rotation for my pandas. Yeah, Solo even rotating down into the bottom lane. I figured Wraithview was going to be alone, but never mind. Trant was down there, so. Now they know Sven's by himself, at least was for a little bit, and they take advantage there at the top lane. Beastmaster increasing what's already a very yeah. good start. This lane positioning up top is pretty annoying, I think, for Nine Pandas. Like, they, there's only a hard camp, but they don't get to pull it. There's two levels in Boar now. I think if Bepum can continue to play aggressive, they can start to slowly be very annoying in this lane. 
Oh, nine pandas going pretty aggressive right here. Blood grenade even coming out. Just, just grasping. That is a kill. Solo credit for it. But yeah, speaking of playing aggressive, he's faster pure. He, he didn't expect that. Oh, absolutely not. Uh, he's owning this lane in both to see us 28 to 10, but they just made that look very easy. Simply right click him down and clearly show him with their abilities coming together. Have more than enough damage. So Beastmaster, he'll TP back in. But Earth Spirit is making his way up here, trying to maybe time this. If they can kill him again after using the TP, that would be massive. I mean, that would just be a sick kill. He just got the urn, and they know that these TP, even if they don't kill him, if they can force Pure like away from this wave, like, yeah, even without getting the kill, this is doing a lot for them. They did scan the Earth Spirit, so they're very aware, but, you know, the other side of this, too, though, GPK is like, thank you very much. I'll just get a free farm middle. He's got the Siege Creep here to take care of. And he'll do so in the meantime. So yeah, they don't get the kill, but bottom lane could be seeing a kill once again. Shadow Demon, look at Solo, back bottom lane. And this time it's trying to get a turn of Tokyo. Coming. He's got his own support, save coming in. Cannot save his teammate though. But Miro may end up falling still. Nightfall, another cast pulled in two seconds. He's to stay, no, let us sight. Miro doing a good job of going through the trees. And now Nightfall cannot stay in range. Wraith King surviving. Now yeah, everyone's got their juke boots on in this series, that's for sure. They're all just cracking each other's ankles. As, yeah, he just gets to walk it off. I mean, if he gets to hit some creeps, you know, he could lifesteal a bit. He also got the Lotus, so it looks like Miro should be okay. Kiyotaka is aiming up top again, but GPK did draw on the map. Love to see an aggressive tree protector just moving around. Of course, save is certainly, or Sol, excuse me, is certainly doing that. Here on tree and this is the second time he's been at the bottom lane we saw him get that kill on a beast master up at the top and almost you know, well i guess they did eventually get the kill also on a shadow demon down here and he's still hanging around at the bottom lane i mean so. that's like one of the nice things when you have sven Don't carry like sven him. is still a good hero he can self sustain his safe lane very easily because he just pushes it he's gonna hit some jungle and then just goes for a back and forth he's very tanky hard to pressure so yeah they're just abusing their lineup to the max right now Scans coming out right there as the Wisdom Runes are about to hit. And it looks like both teams will safely get their own, but hey, you mentioned Sven. I mean, he's 37 and 4 up here. Beastmaster, though, 41 and 13. So Pure, despite that death, is still managing uh, the better CS. And what are we going to see on Beastmaster? I mean, it is going to be the Helm of the Dominator, of course. Yeah, he's going to try to work with that. It's Kiyotaka trying to kill him again. So this is like the second to third time that he's like kind of angling into this top lane. And you can see that the GPK is starting to build a, a small lead. Only 200 network for now. Mm -hmm. But uh, the faster Kiyotaka can get this vessel, then they could even play through the mid lane. So GPK, you know, with the, you hear like... Caster Star, the panel even talk about once again, we've seen him plenty throughout it. The Ags build, it just feels like that's kind of the, the critical point that Torrent Storm out supports. It's just such an annoying thing to play lie. against. That was unexpected. So heroes like Skywrath and oh, Trina in this case, man. certainly not going to be liking it to go up against that once Kunk is able to get it, but we'll need that time. I mean, the Ags are just super strong and very annoying, especially also for like an offline like Wraith King. You have no counterplay. Your hero has to go into the fight as to your skeleton, so... Like, even just by nature, uh, that spell is just gonna do so much. We see that both teams have quite a couple of ancient stacks, so for Nine Panas, it's mainly gonna be the Sven. As for Bedroom, you know, pretty much anyone can take it, but preferably Beans or Conker, speed up their game. I was gonna say, I mean, is Mira go for the Radiance again? And sure enough, he does queue it up right there, actually. Same build, so we are gonna see the Radiance on him this time. No double Radiance, it's mm -hmm. just gonna be him. <laughs> Not this time around. I mean, it would be nice if they can get to that Radiance later on against like CK. So we have a smoke action for now. Solo. Uh, solo by himself. Uh. He's one with the trees, but that's nah, not gonna matter. <laughs> Eventually, gonna be killed off here. And GPK even taking credit for the kill, sitting on top of him. He says, thank you very much. I very much like this move from Bedroom, even if it only does give them the tree and kill. Because right now, when you have these CK's life suitors, they're very good at like maintaining and just soaking the safe lane. You're playing against Tree and Sven. You want to kick out the Sven, help your beast take the top tower, and you can most likely maintain your own safe lane tower. Mm -hmm. Ooh, look at this counter smoke, though. Kiltaka and Antares. They're making the yep. way towards the top lane. I love that play in return. It's, the vessel is up, but no charge yet. So they need, ideally, they just get any kill. Like, if, even if you just kill a support here, it's so big to just get this vessel charge for them, the future kill. Now, even with the smoke, it's pretty obvious our spirit is missing middle lane. So obviously, Bet Boom has some reason to suggest that, okay, maybe he is heading top and they are right. So now GPK makes his way back to the middle lane. And sure enough, 
it's going to be Earth Spirit also making his way back here. So a good idea on paper, but in the end, the actual making the play with it is unfortunately yeah. not there for the Sunday Night Bandos. I mean, honestly, just very good reads from Bedu. Yeah, it's not like impossible to read, but this is what makes them like such a good team, like both individually, but also together and allows them to get this much farm on all their cores. They're very good at reading the map and getting everything on the map possible. Mm -hmm. Cool, have yeah, look at a stack over there being shown off, stacks throughout the jungle, especially on that dire side for Nine Panda. So Sven, he, uh, he's got his Mask of Madness picked up. It's just a matter of time before he eventually makes his way over there to have some fun and really increase that net worth of his. Top yeah. lane though, Kunkka is setting up. I mean, right now, if you're any of the supports, you are just begging your courts, please kill <laughs> the Ancients, kill these stacks. I want gold, I want XP, I want my level sixes because they're all just waiting. Like, yeah. all these supports just want to play Dota. And they're oh, fairly geez. level six. Oh, GPK trying to be patient up at the top lane. Doesn't really get the chance, though, to make a play. You just see Beastmaster there. He is, is taken out, at least uh, softening them up in the meantime. With those level four wild axes, but eventually going to start killing them. Bottom lane, though. I mean, Nine Nine Pandas, they, they, they see this. They have a very aggressive board. Okay, double TP, X mark onto solo. Solo can get pulled in. It will pop over girl, but it's just going to delay the inevitable. And Solo's kill. So a lot of heroes showing up down here at the bottom lane and ends up being a train kill. Yeah, honestly, both, like, both teams are just happy with this. Sure, you know, tower ends up dying, but in the meantime, Nine Pandas, your Sven is farming top, your Sky is getting levels mid, no one really died. So the game just uh, continues. Everyone's just getting all the gold that they need and want. Mm -hmm. Still look back at Beastmaster. He's, he's still working at these uh, the stack here scanning. with the wild axes. And there you go, pure. Pogo sticking in and eventually he's going to start cleaning up. Now he can uh, scan, by the way. Scan him. Oh, this is big. Yeah, he gets all those kills, but just like that, it's going to be killed himself. <laughs> However, Antares needs to be careful now. This, this, this Helmer Smasher of. Beastmaster is doing plenty of damage, and obviously Shadow Demon TPing in, disruption, and they are able to set up the turn kill, so they at least make something happen out of it. Uh, right, Kiyotaka does get out, he also gets some, so, Vessel charges, Haste Rune, you kill the Beastmaster, great play for them. Now this makes, like, the future smoke, like, honestly, they could try to get onto, like, GPK in this mid lane, like, opening and going together for a mid play could be pretty good. Going. I mean, GPK doesn't even know yet what he wants to build. Probably a blade mail. I mean, generally the builds is use like blade mail shard into water park. But uh, we'll have to see if he wants to do some adjustment. Love the water park right there. Yeah, he. Okay, there you go. There's going to be the purchase, yeah. the right click of the full blade mail. So right on that at least, and that will be delivered out. So he's going to start heading towards the top lane. It seems like a couple others, Toronto Tokyo included. All oh, the yeah, way up there goals. too. But look at Sven. Yeah, thank you very much. The support's like, yes, we can breathe. A nice stack there and takes that out. Yeah, so, I mean, everyone is just kind of getting Radiant's what they want at this point. Sure, you know, you did get this one kill on pure, but he's just farming every ancient camp that's like available on the map. I think Bedboom soon would love to take this top tier one tower, like open up the map a little bit. Because now that Nine Pandas took theirs on bottom, right, it's getting a little annoying for them to play this map. Yeah, Sven gonna head to his right as well, and there's that other stack waiting over there of the Ancients, so... He's already been top net worth, it's gonna get that much better, but Chaos Knight, to his credit, certainly keeping up. Nightfall is, uh, building an Echo Saber of his own, he went the armor first, of course. So, both, both position ones especially are certainly performing at hell, even the mids, I mean, really old Forza scheme are actually doing pretty damn good. Yeah. Looks like when I smoked on bottom, they might just get in Terry, so he's looking at the bounty room. Red King started heading over, but when he realizes all those numbers there, it's it's probably not worth trying to help out your support Skyrath. So good call by Miro not to make his way over there, but yeah, easy kill. GPK will take him out, and Miro will fall back Radiance a little bit with his own blade mail picked up, but he's, he has a ways to go before that Radiance will be online. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is I feel like this is a classic TI game. Like, there's a lot on the line. This is your third game in the BO3. You're both just playing towards your timings, and then you just take the fight towards each other. Nero is very aggressive here with all the yeah. 
just going to say, I mean, he obviously knew that they'd been hanging around out here. Perhaps he expected they just fell back for now, but that's going to be a reincarnation. Now the TV there. The response is coming. That's for sure. The ship comes out, Miro. He's oh. taking up, and here's the other yeah, Now Chaos Knight's in trouble. They're kind of playing Dinos here. Nightfall. He might fall. Silence is up, and eventually gets ticked down. Magnetize helping to do the work. Yo, Taka? Through the no, gate. goes to the twin gate. <laughs> oh, no, the twin gate TP. <laughs> right, oh, nice well played by save. But they got the Chaos Knight, so I think Nine Pandas is satisfied. Oh, a nice play from Miero. I wasn't sure if he would live through that, but I think the living armor just did so much against both the the Kanka there and the CK hitting him, then the blade mail damage. So, yeah, beautiful play from Nine Pandas. Dyer's and now, I suppose this could just be a nice transition into a top lane Dyer's push, but uh, not for the time killed. being. They're actually just not that interested in going for a tower kill. Instead, they want to farm their own jungle and her spirit. Also, with the blade mail, uh, that blade mail. This is the the game of blade mails, apparently. No, I mean blade like strength hero meta with blade mails is just so good. And I'm gonna get the hearts after. It's honestly the perfect build. It's got the vessel to get kills. Blade mail is gonna allow him to go in deeper and feel stronger. And then next up, the heart to tank up. Love it. I follow mid. I don't know if I want this one. That's a, that's a dead earth spirit. Yeah, so we're talking about that blade mill. It's not going to save him there, even with the use of it. And now Pet Boom has a team. Going to go for an easy tower push mid lane. Beastmaster, only level one inner beast, but has a helm of the Dominator. This should be a tower kill. Ah, this is like, honestly, on the 50 minute mark, sometimes you just get caught off guard. It turns into nighttime, there's a siege creep. Do you feed a kill here? And it just gives up the mid tier one tower. And then against a the tree. Nero in trouble again. Reincarnation still well on cooldown, so that's not going to come to play. Save has to get away as well. Getting fairly low. Skeletons and even the blast. Getting an extra low, but not low enough. In the end, Miro will be killed. Disruption used to make sure of that, so save. Had to play a little careful, but they kill the Wraith King, getting a little too greedy at the bottom. Yeah. Living Armor is surprisingly annoying with some of these strength heroes that also have like a blade mail. It took them quite long to really get them killed. So Solo does have a shard. It can be quite annoying now. I do like his skibbled. They have an aggressive ward and they do see pure. Let's see if he can dodge another gank. Yeah, save with that level four Living Armor as you talk about that. Or, or Solo, excuse me. Not level four Living Armor. So yeah, very potent there. Hard to break through. Yeah, he Here. Is, is ready. It's kind of like he's playing Alchemist. He's just farming 16, 17 minutes. You know, last game it's the Radiance BKB. This time it's the Mom Echo Split BKB. He's ready to play. He absolutely is. Ramsey is he's up the top, hoping that maybe an opportunity comes, but Teddy will take out a creep spawn at 17 minutes. But yeah, now they're going to push as a team here at the top lane is Nine Pandas. Uh, the only one not with him is, not surprising, Wraith Radiant B. His bottom lane still living down high. there, but will we see a defense come out? Yeah, I, I, I kind of like that he can just play bottom. You don't want to like over five man. But the thing is, he does not have a TP. So this is only good if nine man is not overplayed. Yotaka, oh, he overplayed. He definitely oh, overplayed right here. Really fun, the roar immediately and no chance to get out. So they want him to get the tower kill and whoo, so he only TPs out in time as well. So right as you're talking about it, the overplay comes out. Yeah, you definitely got... I, they are strong, don't get me wrong, and, uh, you know, you're forcing all of them there. That's a good play Dyer's if you don't feed with anyone and everything gets to push in bottom, but now this one small thing turns it into a disaster. Because not only is it the hero kill, but it's going to be a top tier Dyer's one kill. And yeah, and potentially more. Not just Dyer's that, if, not, if Beppu gets to hold this area, this first Roshan until minute 20, it, it's going to be their control. Dyer's Living armor, making it take a little bit longer, but... They will do it, Tree and Protector. He's got Overgrowth, of course, however. So needs plenty of backup, but as you mentioned, uh, Roshan's up. They're gonna go right into the Roshan pit. And everyone is up on Nine Pandas, but now it's forcing them to make this decision. They they should know that this Rosh is happening, right? You see the trajectory of the Courier flying through the ward? Solo is scouting. I mean, you will not have God Radiant's Spring for like 20 seconds, so you would have to delay. So I like that they're coming over and posturing aggressively. Huh. This yeah, is Rith good. <laughs> yeah, Rithki really posturing aggressively. He just charges in. Really blind right there, but I suppose luckily for him, or either way, they're not there. Batboom had already fallen back. Not worth the commitment, uh, so. Yeah, choosing not to fight this now is just that, yeah. essentially. Okay, so it looks like. So Miero will continue, right, to commit to the Radiance. And Ramses is going crit. I, I feel like until they get those blink daggers, because right now, the way I envision fight, if this Earth Spirit rolls in, he's just feeding. He, he ain't got no backup. And then when Sven runs in, he gets SD ulted. I think you need a double blink dagger to help out Kiyotaka in these fights. Yeah, Kiyotaka, you know, mentioned the Midas. 
plan for a little more scaling as the game goes on here, but there you go. The official pick above the Midas. Give me more Chaos Knight, Nightfall. He's uh, working on that Mage Slayer, which is uh, getting close as well. So more progression being made. Uh, Sven on the other side, his own Chrysalis is coming, but we're back uh, in uh, the farm meta of this game right now as we're approaching 20 minutes in. But yeah, Roshan's going to head towards the bottom, of course, at 20 yep. minutes. That's, uh, I'm sure, positioning. In fact, we already see it is starting to happen down here now. Yeah, you can see that Bepum are already looking to run down bottom. I mean, Nine Parents probably want to continue to fight. Uh, yeah, their time, they feel a little awkward right now. Until Radiance, Rave King doesn't feel too strong. I think GPK, he's ready to fight. He would love to squeeze in another level of Torrent, as he only has two levels for now. Uh oh, Nine Pandas might get caught out here. And it looks like it. Bramble Maze. Catching him initially on the Wraith King, however, and Terrors is able to save his team, and Ramsey's now running up with the God's Strength. Going for Dark Willow, Dark Glimmer. Willow. Glimmer caped up, keeps alive for the time being. Nightfall having to be KBTP in the midst of it. He gets out, saves, also going to TP away, and the rest of Bethboom keeps on running. Okay, another roll. What a hit right there on the Kunkka. Gets the science play mails up, but Spent don't care. Shredding right through the Kunkka. GPK's out for 45, and they want more, damn it. Toronto Tokyo, you're next in line. Ramsey's, so you'll talk about the kill, but either way, it's happening for Nine Pandas. And now do they maybe go back for the Roshan? Oh, that looks super awkward. That, that actually looked good for Bedroom at the start, but they just couldn't kill any of those two heroes that they found on their own. Now instead, this might just be nine times of Roche. No dodge ring, but who cares? Yeah, it's, it feels pretty free. I mean, Cutter's dead for another 20 seconds, and the positioning that move is no interest in defending this right now. So, yeah, you look at the top lane. Meanwhile, Ancient Black Dragon is up there. But a uh, bit of a creep push, so uh, Nine Pandas will have to address that top lane, but uh, they're going to focus on Roche on first, get the Aegis for Sven, and then feel confident to fight further after that. Huh, yeah. They're gonna have to start using Cure in some of these fights, I think, because he's doing his best carry impression. He's really fat on his beast, but I've not really seen him with his team yet. Love the Aegis on Earth Spirit. Once, same story oh. as all the other games. Give it to him, it's gonna allow him to go in more. Your other cores are gonna have BKB. Red King already has an Aegis. I love it. Yeah, so might as well throw it on to him. Logic is certainly there, but yeah, pure Beastmaster. He is very farmed. Helm of the Overlord to that point. No, no blink just yet, though. That will be next in line, but he wants to get this pipe. Uh, making a priority to go for the pipe on the Beastmaster. Okay. Well, I guess, like, once you get pipe, you kind of neglect or negate a lot of the damage from anyone that isn't Sven. So that okay. will help you a lot. Let's so have a little bit of a, a pause going on. Yeah, Ramsey's blink coming up next. Definitely the perfect item. Yeah, you talk about that. Um, also noticing Shadow Demon. Uh, no shard yet. Uh, of course, he's going to go for it next. He does have uh, the Aetherlands Just first. queued it up. Okay, yeah. so maybe also, like, you can just go for a Tormentor at this time, because, yeah, I can not talk about it Be enough. Careful, the though. SD shard is so strong. And that, too. Do you know that the only Death Nightfall had last game was from the Tormentor, actually? <laughs> that's that's yeah, ridiculous. That, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I'm sure. They'll be on point with that. So yeah, exactly. Go for the shard that way as well. Certainly a possibility. But in the tech pause here, don't expect anything less. Game number three with so much being on the line. And I mean, we, we I don't know if the panel mentioned it as well, but either way, again, the winner of this, obviously both teams still remaining alive. It's just where you go in the main event. And the winner of this going yeah. to the upper bracket, they'll have to play LGD. Obviously a very difficult opponent there. They've looked so impressive in the group stages on the road to TI, but still you're in the winner bracket. Losing team will have to play uh, Vivid Keys from uh, South America there. So, those are the matchups that are set to be. My bones, yeah, it, honestly, both those teams looking pretty good. I think even Keith Star is looking better than people. Absolutely and LGD are, uh, no sense. yeah, a scary one. But for now, let's make sure that all the players feel comfortable. Because it's still anyone's game at this point. I'd say Nine Panel is definitely in the driving driver's seat a little bit. I have ages and most of the items they do want. Yeah, so pretty early on in this one. I mean, it's. Obviously, that last fight went very well for Nine Pandas, getting them the Roshan and everything, but would you say that they're in the lead, or is this still kind of a coin flip for you right now? Uh, I would say that Nine Pandas are slightly in the lead. Like, especially because a lot of the time it just also depends on momentum. They have this Aegis now, they are about to get Radiance, and I've not been very inspired by the last few minutes of Bad Doom. I, I gotta say, like, Nightfall's had this BKB for a long time, they've had water park and like all the timings on pure and they have not done much with that 
And you gotta wonder if that mental game's coming into play. Again, knowing what is on the line here, this being TI after all the roads TI and the pressure, etc. And we wanna look at it, but either way, I'll wait for the rejoin here of Ramsey's. We'll be good to advance on once uh, the issue is figured out. But yeah, Sven, uh, he is feeling extra powerful right now. You mentioned the age is in the hands of Earth Spirit. Yeah. Um, with the playmill with the Spirit Vessel. So yeah, he's gonna work on a BKB himself next too. So no surprise here, a lot of BKBs making an appearance. I do think from a standpoint where this game like drags out and people get to play like near perfect Dota, this no SD is gonna be super annoying no to deal with this Sven. And I feel like the water part kind of deals with the rest while CK gets to hit. It's still very hard to execute. But if this game drags, I will slightly prefer Bedroom. As uh, Toronto told you, reading some notes, wonder what it says. <laughs> All right, pause very like... useful, of course. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Might, yeah, take an advantage here. We're going to pause. Might as well, uh, you know, get a couple other things here in the meantime. So, all right, here we go. Back into game number three, though. You mentioned also the Radiance of Wraith Gate. It yeah. feels a little bit, you know, not shark not best here on Twitter. One, two, three. We got it. Okay. He knew. He knew. He didn't. He don't need to rush it when you know you're going to get it. This guy, this guy's good. That's why he's a TI winner. There you go. Uh, Tokyo manages to get it, and that demonic cleanse now on Lions. Yeah, definitely one of the stronger shards in the uh, game for sure. Her spirit, her spirit, roar, no. Can't. And I got the ult from SD, but roar slightly too long on the wind up there. Yeah, so her spirit will survive for the time being, and it kind of goes back to the, you know, not going to blink just yet. He is prioritizing it next, but you're yeah, going that fight. We're still looking. Kind of close to being caught out, but at least okay. Top three, two. Kind of forced a bit, but Glyph and Living Armor will delay that for the time being. Radiance bottom lane bottom pressure. Yeah. Meanwhile, mid lane, you know, Kunko doing Kunko things. GPK using the excellent himself. They're in the creep wave. We're going back into the Radiance dire jungle tower. there. Meanwhile, Gotaka pushing mid tower with Antares nearby. Not been pinging it out, that boom is, but Nightfall is the one doing so. Pure Radiance teleports in. Has fallen. Trying to get a good angle, but really can't find it. They don't know where everyone else is, so. Yeah, a bit, maybe a bit late on this. I think we're going to have to start dealing with some of the waves. Like, bottom is a little bit annoying. In the meantime, for Nine Panda, top lane is annoying. So I think we'll see top. both teams perhaps defend their lanes and potentially smoke into each other. We'll see Nine Pandas definitely has to address this top lane once again. Beastmaster Puri's. I think that's what, yeah, that's what Bepum are banking on. Like, this is where you can go for plays. You're like, they're gonna defend top. Someone might TP there. So let's see if Nine Panos kind of take the bait. Or just even run up there, and they're kind of trying to cut them off, get them a little bit dysfunctional. Miro could be a target. There's the opening into with the X. The ship as well, Kanko. Will be counter jumped in response with the ship. They're gonna run. Time being, the Torrent Storm also going around every which way. Reincarnation out of the Wraith King. Gonna burn down as well. Kyotaka, though, the back is out of the midst of it. A bit awkward indeed. Who's a better for it so far? Kyotaka, the Wraith King. Wraith King will die. Well, maybe not actually. Okay, yeah. He gets away some way, somehow. But now Nightfall trying to run away. Kyotaka's dead in the midst of it. They're getting him. Nightfall's dead. The stun from Sven is too much. Finally, the God Strike gonna be used by Rams. He's not even activated until just now. But absolutely, it's Nine Pandas with a victory in the fight here. They take out Shadow Demon, and Beastmaster eventually gets run down to triple kill for Ramses. He said it. It was, a, it was kind of a funky, awkward fight. Wait, that's just so, it's just so deep. But when you also think about it, like Earthspirit and Wraith King, they both have ages. It takes so long to kind of go through them. Ramses didn't even have God Strength until like 20 seconds into the fight because they used it for farming. That's how hard they won this fight. They didn't even need to spend it full power. Radiance top tower is full. Yeah, uh, that's uh, nine pandas. Got to feel really, really good after that one. Radiance we uh, was going to the pause there. Up until that fight, it's just okay. Maybe a coin flip. Still not uh, definitely favoring nine pandas now. I mean, look at Sven too. Ramsey's twenty thousand net worth almost here, just under twenty thousand. He's no one's even close to him now. And yeah, you're right. The fact that he didn't even pop God strength until the fight was essentially already over. Says something yeah, like, as well. He, did, he didn't need it, and like even killing Wraith King, you just spawn like all these stupid illusions. You have to like hit through his blade mail. That's not the fight they want to take at all. 
And now if you're Bet Boom, you got to figure out how to really calm this down and start playing a bit of a comeback game. And I, I mean, I look back at Pure the Beastmaster, that tool of initiation, the blink, still feels like it's going to be promising. Uh, he's trying to farm it right now. About 800 gold saved up, but get in there at least. Yeah, it's honestly, it's starting to feel very awkward for them. Like, until he has this blink, I don't think they're going to want to fight, so it's going to be like another one or two minutes of a bit of a stalemate for them. I think Nine Pandas could definitely use that timing. Even GPK, they've done a very good like job at kiting the water part. They see it, they just let Ray King tank it, they dance a bit, five seconds later, boom, then, this, then, then the fight starts for Nine Pandas. Yeah, Kyotaka, the Aegis reclaimed. And yeah, Aegis continues to farm up in the jungle over here. He's working on his own BKB. Of course, the Octarine Core online, we just see the constant rolling boulder, the mobility that he gets with this hero, especially with the Octarine Core, is just absurd. It can be anywhere on the map, it feels like at any time. Tonka, I, I, trying to build a heart. The, the more I see this Wraith King, I feel like this hero is actually very annoying to deal with in this state. Because sure. even if he does have the best laning, there's so much like space on this bottom map, he just keeps summoning skeletons. You run into him, he has some stupid ages. He buys <laughs> Agonims, and then like he helps. Yeah, it's just like, very annoying. Like, Dota is all about options. And when you suddenly remove an option of attacking a hero or a part of the map, like his push is very awkward to deal with. Yeah, that's always been the niche of this hero for all the time with everything, right? It's that second life, and it's like, how do you deal with that? Exactly, it's all that last fight. I mean, yes, they blew him up quickly for the first life, but it's you have to wait for them to actually come back up and then try to kill him again. And that buys so much time for the opposition yeah. to then respond, and as they certainly did, and, and we saw, so. Satanic just finished by Sven Meanwhile, so Ramsey's why not get bigger and better? He also has a Titan Sliver, so uh, he is so strong. Like he also has the Warcry armor. He could even think about buying the shard later, so it's undispellable to help his team against the SD ult. But honestly, yeah, nine pandas, they're playing great, they're moving nicely, and they're hardcore in the driver's seat right now. That boom. To pull over that vehicle some way, somehow. Ramses pick up the room before sending the illusions out. I also love the double Lotus Orb on Nine Pandas on both their supports. Put it on Sven. If he if he gets roared, Beast is gonna fire it back at himself. You're gonna you can take off the terrorized fear you against the brambles, so you, he doesn't have to BKB early. It's amazing. Just a lot of armor for them too. I mean, there's a lot oh, of yeah, damage sure. coming out from the Radiant team here, like Chaos and especially. So. Why not uh, get a little chunkier when it comes to the armor? Good tool to have there. Wraith King, he's got a good tools. That that axe, it's going to be delivered now. So he's going to have his own axe scepter. His Miro also picks up that wisdom room. And that's just another annoying ability that Bat Puma is going to have to kind of deal with in these fights. Uh, this is, uh, I, I must say that this, this is some new tech. I was not aware how strong this Wraith King is. So after seeing these two games, I think it's definitely reaching like S tier territory if you. I have not seen a good answer yet. Well, Sven starting to march down the mid lane now. The, well, gonna kill an illusion at least, but a Roshan, eight seconds on the red timer, so the potential for Roshan's spawn is coming up. It will be to the south eventually here. Uh, we're gonna be coming up in daytime in about 30 seconds. Not the lizard. Me. Oh, yeah. Easy, easy 250 for Antares. Uh, it's also, I mean, Kiyotaka has a BKB. They've got the Ags on Wraith King. I don't know. Ramses is probably like nearly full slaughtered. I think they're all super chilling right now. They're so happy with the state of the game. Yeah, you can see Fed Boom is, they, they understand that they're behind, I'm sure, too. And you know, what's the next obvious point of contestion? That Roshan, two minutes spawn on Roshan. We also look at that win probability there. Uh oh, they see them and they're coming in smoke. Yeah, that's Shadow Demon, likely dead. You cannot do that, my friend. <laughs> gonna find him. Oh, like Chaos Knight is locked down up here just north. So they kill Shadow Demon. Chaos Knight for the fight by getting a Lotus Orb Reflection. He does himself and he's gonna get completely turned on. And immediate smoke. Nine Pandas is feeling it. Oh, yeah, I love the back to back smoke as well. Like, just keep speeding it up. Catch anyone. They're not allowed to be anywhere on this entire map. Beautiful war catches them out initially. Radiance middle. Uh, Arcane Ruler Spirit. It's. It's time. Oh, jeez. With an Octarine core, that's absurd. Radiant structures are fortified. 
Yeah, this tower, it, it's gonna melt the uh, fortification, but you still have 28 seconds on Chaos Knight. I mean, without CK, you really do not have a lot of threatening damage on the Radiant side. Did he God strengthen the fight to kill them, or did he use it to farm? I'm a bit surprised they're not getting racks of this, but either way, Nine Panda still incredibly happy with this play. One minute for Roche, so let's just use this time. Clear the map, keep good positioning. Set. There's another one being taken down. Yeah, if they can get the next Roche. Woo. The Nine Pandas are cooking. Yeah, I think you use the God Strength to help him kill that uh, Shadow Demon. Maybe expecting a bit more of a fight, but either way, it's going to be back up in about 14 more seconds now. Now, as we, as we see, Roshan still has a little over 30 seconds yeah. for making an appearance, but they're going to be camping the areas, Nine Pandas at least. Save. Save is still having a flawless game. 1 0 6 on the Dark Willow, but there's honestly only so much he can do. I don't. They cannot contest the second Roach. I, I think it's impossible. Not even worth trying. I, I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, I guess then the next best is just push top lane like they're doing and force a response out of Nine Pandas. Yeah, like get as much gold and XP as you can. Like maybe try to set up the map in a way where there's a small chance Nine Pandas will react in a bad way and you can capitalize off that. But yeah, contesting this, it's a no-go. You just straight up lose the game. The immediate spawn is just going to attack and double damage rune does spawn at the bottom rune. And actually, uh, Nine Pandas has vision of that area. We know it's there. That boom does not. This will be that Roshan has mentioned. Uh, he uses the top lane, is taking the pressure. It's going to get a little bit of shit damage into the tower, but no heroes are attacking. It's just really the creep wave, so. And also, like, the Treant kind of, like, removes the fact of where you have to, like, care too much about it. Like, even if this tower takes 99% damage, you will just heal it back to full. Yutaka's going to push the wave, Ramses goes mid. They're going to wait for God Strength in, like, 30 seconds. Push it waves and just go smoke. Again, our spirit, the candidate for that Aegis, as well as the cheese, Ben. It's just feeling godlike, understandably. Just look at wow. his inventory. Red Boom are going for their own smoke. Okay, they're really hoping to find someone off guard here. And desperate times call for desperate plays. Nightfall. Where they find? They see Skyrath there for a split second. And it's not the prime target, but it's a target. You know, the Lotus of Reaction again, making it a bit awkward. Mystic Flare put down. They're going to go for Trina as well. Trina will get blown up, but knocked down is pure in the back line. So he gets overgrowth, and now Mira sitting on top of him with Ramsey. Ramsey's wants Nightfall, though. He's trying to find him. Can't find him just yet, but actually looking okay for Bed Boom right now. First Crown Miro gonna be stunned. Pull back with the exit of Pure Finally taking some good damage there from Sven, but Ramses can't finish him. The fear kicks in and the BKB is worn off. Ramses there for Sensei Cannon. Actually doing okay. Well, so they were far. GPK is gonna get run down. The Blade Knight ain't gonna save him there. He's out for a minute. So it's kind of a, like two for two. I think SD did buy back in this fight as a tree and protector. And, uh, you know, God's strength is down, so they get to hold a little more. But yeah, that was... I'm starting to... Like, this is the best case scenario fight for Bedboom. They find both supports, and even then, they barely, like, scraped an even fight. I mean, the fact that Antares was able to even get off the Lotus Orb as he got oh, jumped yeah. right there, I think that... The big reason that's why I went not too shabby, pure. He has oh, no clue. Oh, Ramses. I mean, no God God's strength. strength. Yeah, I don't know if... Yeah. That seems like the, the smart play there, because with yeah. support coming, that would have been very risky. I just kind of check in, of course. Did get the shard now, I do like it. You kind of want to get that against, you know, SD. Can't really purge it. You help your entire team, like, so much. Like, now they have to work through War Cry, through the Wraith King Axe, the Living Armor as well. Yeah, it's dirty. Radiant's top tower is under attack. And Sven will be our first hero to hit level 25 in this game of this race. It's 20 points half right now, so... Something else we'll have to consider. Yeah, he's gonna get so much more damage. In the meantime, the Tormentor taken by Nine Pandas. It's gonna Radiant's be Skyrath getting his own shard now to work with. Even more armor. Uh, maybe the one game where the Skyrath shard is gonna have impact. If he gets to like just blow out his ult, get some armor, you know, the shield of the Zion. Not the favorite shard of most people, but he will take it. Fortification, or more so even the backdoor protection has kicked in at the top lane, but eventually it's going to be brought down here as Ben Ramses will stick around and 
Do some damage to it, Miro. Pushing out the mid lane, meanwhile. Oh, he's gonna keep it god strength to get in this top tower kill. Top yeah, might as well. I just speed up the game as so, Kiyotaka is chilling and slash also looking. But they're not biting. Uh, I mean, again, how, how can you attack the Zerg Spirit? He has like 3k HP and an Aegis. Yeah, it's just not a candidate even for 4k HP. It's just not somebody you want to be jumping. It, I mean, the strength meta as you go back to you know, it's there really is no prime target. I mean, obviously, maybe like the Skyrath that's supposed to blow, but even we saw with the Lotus Orb reaction, even he took a while to kill off and it's way too much time. So, yeah, no, no easy answer. The, the supports are still the best. The cores are, are they're just too tanky. You need to like kill the supports and then try to kite and then refight later. It's a super hard task for that group. Nice roll Shadow Demon, he ain't gonna stand a chance there. He's out for 75 seconds. No buyback on him. Uh, Sven Radiant's also did just hit level 25, so he does get the God Strength damage. In 20 seconds, he will have another God Strength ready to use. Her spirit <laughs> aggressively rolling bottom, but they're hunting. They're looking for fear. They know he's down here. Even using the Shiva Scar. It's a matter of time before he. Oh, he felt he saw him. Yep, split second. Whoa. God, just the tracking right there. He's gonna go for the TP okay, play. Total reach him. Oh, not quite. Hey, Ramses is already ready in mid. He's gonna start the fight. <laughs> and kill him. All right, easy game. <laughs> well, I mean, okay. Meanwhile, Ramsey is just soloing the other team's carry. Start off the bat, Bedlam's in. Just do what you can to stall as long as possible. So, but maybe about a minute. Seconds. So, for the for your daddy. Yep. And cheese. <laughs> Why not? There's the reclaim, and yeah, he still has a cheese suspension. In the meantime, Skeleton Man will take second right. I, I mean, Bad Boomer just Radiant not ready to fight. They might have Radiant one more spot. fight if they can stall for Nightfall, but I'm not seeing any signs of life. Yeah, even with Nightfall, it still feels pretty grim, but yeah, he might as well stick it out. So we're very good around for Bad Boomer, of course. Play a nine bandas. Everything in the game right here. Dark Willow, if you jump, nice glimmer kick initially. Keep yourself alive for a little bit longer. Uh, he's up to terrorize. He's thinking about it. It's just a matter of when. CK does have buyback now. It's about 10 seconds on Resurrection. It's that awkward spot of do I buy back or not. Okay, they're holding for now. The big black dragon took the top tier 3 tower. He's uh, chilling. I don't know how much it matters. Because if Shrine Panos go attack once more, you're getting mega. Pure, he, pure has reached the timing of the game. He has Refresher if he Dyer's buys the recipe, I think. So maybe this is where it all comes together. Yeah, a little bit more gold for that. Five to five, there's the Mega Grease. The Wins are going to pull up on Sven. I mean, that's the Torch from his Wonka. And you'll notice that Kena kicks in. The God Strike, the War Cry, and it's return damage time. Ramses, he's just going off. They tried so hard, they are unable to get too far, and it's Fefu will be deterred. It's nine pandas, two to one. They played so well. I love their drafts. I love how they play. Such a deserved victory.